What's going on guys, Balkan Architect here and in today's tutorial we're going to be covering the topic of structural bracing in Revit. I'm going to be showing you how to add structural bracing to your steel Revit construction projects and then I'm also going to be showing you how to figure out a steel connection for those structural uh, for that structural bracing. But before we get started I would just like to ask you to like this tutorial, it helps me out a lot. And if you haven't already, I suggest you subscribe because I make useful Revit tutorials every week. I make three a week. And also, if you want to get all of my Revit project files, or if you maybe want to check out some of the advanced Revit courses that are over one hour long, I suggest you check out my Patreon first link in the description. Okay, so let's get started. So here we have this project that I'm going to be using. This is just some kind of a warehouse that I, I, I designed a, a bit earlier. It's just a basic blank construction. Now here we have a problem. This building will at some point fall down because of wind, because it will kind of tilt in one direction or the other, and then it can fall down. So the problem with that is we don't have any uh, kind of side structural bracing. So let's see how can we add that. So for, for structural bracing, uh, because this is a steel project, you might want to go to steel, but no, that's the wrong tab to be at. You need to go to structure, and then here we have structural bracing, and it's called structural framing, and then it's called brace. Now I'm going to tell you in uh, just a little bit why that is, why it's it's called structural framing and then brace instead of just structural bracing. So here we want to place it over here so let's go here to brace and then here in the properties panel as you can see uh, we have some options and we have this round bar we also have a universal beam and then also we have a different type of a universal beam a bigger one and uh, a bit different one but if if you're not happy with the ones that are being offered over here you can always go to load family and then over here you can add uh, an another structural bracing. Now if you go here to your uh, metric or uh, imperial library and if you go to all of the structural options you're going to notice that you only have trusses, stiffeners, retaining walls, some rebar shapes, framing, foundation, connections and columns. We don't really have structural bracing. Well you need to remember that it was called structural framing two dots and then bracing. So all of those uh, braces, let's go back, all of those braces are actually under structural framing. So you need to go over here to structural framing, go to steel, and this particular round bar is located somewhere over here. So yeah, M uh, under dash, under dash uh, round bars. So that's the one. So I'm just going to use that one, but uh, as I said, that's how you can load those in. Now, moving on, when you want to place it, you can do it in 3D. You just need to turn on 3D snapping and then you can go. But as, as you can see over here, it's only going to kind of snap to the bottom and here to the top. And it's going to, it's very easy to mess this thing up. So you might want to snap it there, but what if you want to snap it to a different position? Now, you can snap it from endpoint to endpoint, then select it and scroll down over here in the properties panel and find your structural uh, tab and then here we have some start attachment elevation and end attachment elevation and they're kind of like uh, like some offsets so you can play with those to position the beginning and the end uh, in a particular way that you want to position it but I prefer a different approach for placing these so I'm just going to delete this for now let's go here into level 1 and let's check out this layout so we have a bunch of these grid lines we have 1 through 4 and here a through F. Now as we're going to be placing it here in this quadrant actually between these two columns we just need to remember that this is a uh, a grid line number one and here we have an elevation that's actually looking perpendicular to grid uh, grid line one so I'm just going to select that one and let's open up this elevation. Okay I'm just going to select it and kind of stretch this just a little bit and then here let me go and create a brace so I'm just going to go to brace and then I'm going to pick a plane now for picking a plane I'm going to go with 
grid line number one. So you don't actually have to have a perpendicular grid line, you can actually, a perpendicular uh, reference plane, you can actually go with a grid line. So you just need to go over here to grid line and select grid line number one and click OK. So it's going to use that grid line as sort of a reference plane. So yeah, now you can position it here on the endpoint, but you can actually go up a bit, maybe go up like this, I don't know, like 30 centimeters and then go to the other side. Let's place it maybe over here. And I'm always going to go to the middle of the column. I, I don't like to place it kind of here on the end part. I like to go to the middle of the column and then let's place it perhaps over here. And when you select it, you're going to notice that here we have these uh, start joint cutbacks and end joint cutbacks over here. So that's basically this offset from the middle of the column. Now to fix it up and to make it look nice, you may be tempted to kind of stretch it just a little bit and then just use the cope tool to cope this with that and then you get this kind of nice edge and if you go into 3D, it looks nice. But the problem is it looks like it's welded on the column and that's usually not how bracing works. Usually you want to have just a little bit of give, kind of a, a little bit of a pivot point over here so it works better. So I'm just going to hit undo a few times and now let's figure out a correct connection for this. So we, for that we need to go into structural connections and I'm just going to select the column first, hold the control key and then select the brace and then go here to structure and here we have connections, structural connections. Now you're going to notice that here we have this kind of a big blue dot and here this number two. So this is like the main element and this is the kind of the secondary element. The reason for that is because I first selected the column and then I selected the bracing. Now if you kind of messed it up and selected it in the other way around. You can always go here and just click this little dot underneath the number and then this is primary and this is secondary. But because this is a column and this is just a flimsy brace, this will of course always be the primary element. Okay, so once we have that structural connection in place, that's kind of just a generic connection. It just shows you that there, uh, that you need to connect these two elements, but we don't really have any connection in place. So while this connection is selected, I'm just going to open up the drop menu on the properties panel. And if you don't have these options over here, don't worry. Uh, there is a way for, for you to load them in. And I actually have a tutorial that's just on these uh, structural uh, on structural break on structural connections so if you want to check that out i'm going to be leaving a link in the description of this video so go ahead and check it out okay let me just scroll down just a little bit and let's find uh, what we have for this bracing so i'm going to scroll down until i find something for a brace and here i've got this single tube brace this is a tube brace and it's a angle and a kidney so that sounds really cool so I'm going to use that one so just select that one wait for a second and Revit is going to figure out how to place it so as you can see it placed it over here in that matter so here we have that one screw and it's kind of pivoting around that and if you can't orbit just select that and now you're going to be able to orbit around that thing Okay, so we have that connection over here. Uh, let's uh, mimic the same thing up here. So again, select first the main column, then the brace, holding in the control key to do a double selection. Then you go to structure, to structural connections, and then you just search for that same connection. Single tube brace uh, gusset. No, not the gusset. Let's go with the angle one. Okay, there we go. So we have this one over here as well. Now, this may suit your needs, but maybe you want to have some additional uh, changes to this, uh, to this structural connection. So for that, you can go here to modify parameters, wait for a second for it to open up the dialog. So here's the modify parameters dialog, particularly for this single tube bracing. So here we've got the brace T, and here the cover shape, that's this thing over here, this uh, plate that's kind of connecting to the tube. I want it to be maybe circular to accommodate the tube in a better way. So I'm just going to go here to round and maybe I'm going to give it just a bit of a projection or an offset on the outside. So here for projection, I'm going to type in 0 0.0, 0 
one because this is uh, currently the units are meters so this is just like one centimeter offset so I really like the way this looks and maybe we can make some uh, other additions now you can play around maybe with the bolt layout or the the bolts and welds so you can set all of those things over here but uh, I'm going to go here to special and here we've got these uh, these stiffeners beam stiffeners and actually I want to kind of stiffen this beam over here so I'm going to go with stiffener number two and go with a full stiffener and here we have that stiffener now I can place one above uh, but as you can see it's kind of going to mess up these bolts over here so I'm just going to leave that at none or maybe three quarters now let's go with none okay I'm just going to exit out of this okay let's do the same thing on the bottom let's adjust uh, this connection as well so go to modify parameters place it over here let's go with round with an offset of 0 0.01 there we go we have that little offset looks nice and now let's go with special beam stiffeners and here we can go with both of them so let's go full and full there we go now if we exit out of that yeah we have those two stiffeners and if if you can see here these kind of cross signs those are actually welds so that's how Revit uh, presents or graphically uh, illustrates welds on your model so we have those as well Okay, so there we go. We've got our brace and it's structurally connected and we've edited our connections. And if we select it, Revit is also calculating all of the, uh, the length and the volume of the steel used for this structural brace. Okay, so that's pretty much it for this tutorial. I hope you have learned something new on bracing, structural bracing in uh, Revit. I hope this will be useful for any future projects that you might be doing. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, like, and share this video. If you want to download this project file or if you want to get access to any of the advanced Revit courses, uh, again, as I said, check out the link to my Patreon in the description of this video. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.